Welcome everyone to this new installment of our webinar on 2D tree cutouts. Today we're going to have a look at why trees are important compositional elements. Composition is an important topic while people tend to simplify it to the extent of just thinking about the rule of thirds, but keep in mind that each object that you place in an image has to serve and increase the overall composition of your image. So in the same way that like cutouts of people have a huge impact on the perception of your image, the cutouts of trees or 3D trees that you can use also are going to have like a huge impact on the way you look at the image and the way you perceive the project and the overall image. Several studios that use Forest Digital products sent us their images that are no use to showcase good practice in regards of the way trees can be used to enhance composition in an image. So let's start with this cool rendering by ArcVis Studio Loom. If we look at the uh, foreground trees here, for example, you can see that the main thing they do is whoops the main thing the main thing they do is to take off a bit of negative space because here what i call negative space is the the like empty area that the sky is and the thing is bright areas tend to make you look at them so what you want is to actually refocus the viewer on this part of the image so that's what the foreground trees are for here so that's a good thing here the other thing then you can see is the middle ground trees these ones are really useful because they're used to actually uh, make your project pop a little bit more from the context because if you look at this part for example here if you think that by example um, if you didn't have the tree, then you would have this sort of color that come all the way to this facade. And the thing is, the discrepancy between these two uh, colors here is so small that you would actually have a, uh, a bit of a hard time reading the actual um, geometry of the building. So what you do is you actually use a tree so that you get a nice contrast and you can perfectly read the overall shape of the project. The same happens here because otherwise you would have all the, the sky coming here, although the sky can be used to read because it has like a nice contrast, but it doesn't work all the time because it depends on the color of your project. But still, here's the, basically the same idea too. And then you have the background trees, which are like have less contrast and sort of helps you ground the foreground and the basically the image in something like in a in uh, giving the ID that stuff are happening behind the, the image here. Here we have an image by uh, the beauty and the bit. Same principle, we have like the background trees that sort of set the projects. We have a couple of trees here. These ones are sort of uh, building up the, uh, the perspective and also since they're blocking that it sort of makes you look at the project here although the project is i guess most of this but uh it sort of reframe the the focus the main thing i want to talk about here is the use of cast shadows because here you have like your tree that sort of takes out negative space which is a good thing so that you look at the project but here it is the same if you think that here you didn't have these shadows here that means you would have a really light area that would cover basically the whole lower third of the image and when you have bright areas it tends to catch your eye so that means that instead of looking at this bright area here you would be looking at this bright area here which is completely irrelevant because that's just like grass so what you do is you place trees and you get nice cast shadows so that the shadow makes it less interesting for your eye and you tend to look at this. So that's a, that's a good trick. And the final one here is to get some shadow uh, trees ne next to your project so that you can get like really nice cast shadows um, on your project so that you animate the facade because otherwise it could look a little uh, dull. Although it's it's not like uh, you also have of course to deal with the landscape uh, plan that usually you'll get from your client 
This guy here is uh, quite simple too. You have like uh, the usual foreground element that sort of um, makes your eye look more like at this area rather than this one, which is also emphasized by the fact that this is in the shadow, whereas this is in the sun. The other thing here that I want to talk about is like you have the same principle here that I talked about before, and you also have the idea that this is use, used as a screen so that basically you focus on this foreground first and then you can sort of see like uh, hints of the facade behind these trees so it sort of creates a nice depth because if there was no trees like that you wouldn't be able to understand like the, um, the distance there is between this facade here and this facade here but the fact that there's like the the room for a whole tree and like actually three trees means that you can actually understand that there's this is like a, a plaza here. In our case here, it's more about like the density and the hues. So I quite like the autumnal tree here because it sort of relates to the bricks here. So the idea here is that you have like the foliage with slightly different hues that ranges from um, from yellow to orange basically. And here you have the same thing with a, like a brownish uh, brick that sort of have the same pattern. So it has like a really nice uh, rhythm that you can sort of uh, play with here. Then you have, so that's for the foreground elements and like the overall, all the elements because it's like more a hue uh, topic. Then you have all these small trees here where you can see that there's not much uh, leaves in the upper part so that you sort of have a gradient of information from the top here that goes downward. And uh, so that's that makes it quite different if you think that these guys were not here you would have a completely different uh, per perception of the building here you can understand that there's depth here so that you can have trees and so it means that the building is not directly on the street same goes with these guys here and how these trees enable you to understand that it also like the trees here even though you can still understand without it but the trees being smaller you understand that there's an edge here and that this goes back and then like that so that this is further and then for the background you have the little big trees here that sort of makes you understand that there's stuff happening behind the whole scene here and this guy here is a little bit the same you have this guy here at cast shadows um, well actually it doesn't come from this guy but still you have like cast shadows here that sort of make sure that the foreground is not too bright so that you focus on this part of the image you then have this guy here that sort of makes sure that you understand how these two buildings work together you then have all the cast shadows that it sort of animates to grass that otherwise would be quite boring but in this case it works really well and you also have like the nice soft cast shadows that animates the facade plus you can see in the reflection all the stuff happening that are actually not in the frame and here you also have like a nice part here that sort of uh, gives you an idea like a, a nice composition between these two elements here and sort of downgrade or downplay the the part of this facade because you can still see it through the trees but you focus more on the brighter facade here you have exactly the same system so that you understand that first this is not the same building second there's room here for like a small plaza for some trees etc so that's how you can use trees in your image to actually make it make the project more legible and uh, and the image more interesting basically one thing i quickly do now is to go and do like a, a quick test and explanation of the the same idea with a with a base render we can see that for example we can add some trees here so that we focus more on this part of the project we can also imagine of adding some trees here so that we understand that there's something happening there we can also add some trees here to hide this part etc so you can see like 
here at the moment it's so open that you don't really know where to focus but by using trees we can actually completely refocus the the attention of the view viewer so for example this guy here helps us refocusing on this part because it's on a on a third so that it means this is more interesting then we can have this little guy here that sort of changes the way you perceive because here the problem with this facade is that it's super bright so what you want is to downplay it so if you add a tree um, in front of it it sort of makes it less visible you can still understand what it is etc but still it sort of uh, don't, doesn't catch your eye too much this guy for instance is like uh, I'll add this guy first here if you want this guy you could even like just use a like a the, just use the corner as a framing or something like that but it could be good also to to use it like that so that you have something that frame again also you can even have in terms of density play with uh, between the trunks here and the pillars here so the other one so this one are these ones are quite easy to sort of uh, justify in our case here, we can also add some trees on the right side because we really don't want to see too much of the sky here. And you have to think ahead and know that all these trees will cast shadows here on the, on the ground, which is going to animate the ground in an interesting way. The one I was talking about before is this guy. So here it's quite funny because depending on what you want you're going to have to put it in a different way you can either not put anything which means you will have a nice legibility of uh, what's happening there if you start putting a tree uh, or is it there if you put it like that you sort of only make visible this and sort of don't play the the importance or the weight of the this facade if you do it uh, like that you can also put it there and then it means you downplay the importance of this facade and sort of emphasize this which can be a bit complicated because you have to just be careful that this sort of works well together maybe you want to add a tree here or I don't know but the good thing is that this is in the sun and this is not and still you have this sort of um, thing here that sort of works you can also do it whoops, uh, here you can also do it differently and sort of make it much smaller and actually use it in order to um, frame the what is happening here because at the moment all the trees are super small so you actually don't really understand how big this is so what you can do is actually add this little guy here so that you maybe not that much but like that and that way you can sort of um, emphasize this sort of passage here which is uh, I think could be interesting you can also like have to these guys are 3d but you could do it in 2d and have like a nice um, density of trees here so that you can create uh, a good background with like lower contrast and things like that you can also so yeah here because you want to get as little as possible of a uh, uh, sky because it's too like it's so bright you don't want to don't want it to be too too present or too visible so that guy you could add then you have all these guys so yeah then you would have to play around you know like between the thing we had before uh, with this guy being bigger here and you have to see what you want to show basically of the project and the way you want the people to read it so that's the that's the idea then another thing you have to keep in mind is that how easy it is to actually right click and relink um, where is it relink to file so that way you can like say if you have several the same tree several times but you're actually changing the species or the variety you can just relink your smart objects and they're going to change all the all the trees in your image which is quite convenient so to wrap up this video quickly uh, we'll have a look at the 
little checklist you have to go through when you're doing like when you're inserting your trees so that it has to serve a purpose of course the first purpose of your trees is to be is to match the landscape plan of your project but then it has to uh, bring something to the image so it can either be regarding depth so foreground vegetation or middle ground that sort of cuts the the project from the context or the background sort of adds depth to your overall image and implies that there's something happening behind the scene so that's a good thing a hero tree so this is where like your it becomes the center of your composition so it's it has to be usually like right in the middle or on the left or right third and it has to be quite big so that you understand that the whole composition relies and rotates uh, or hovers around this hero tree then it can helps to add facade variation so that you can hide or reveal things like play with balconies facades windows or hide stuff that you don't want to see another thing is the density so if you have like a really simple project having like a big density of a uh, large density of um, of trees around it is going to create a nice contrast because contrast is like a notion that works uh, not only with like colors but also with just the, the weight of objects in an image which is a uh, something to keep in mind and the final thing is the cast shadows which is something you have to keep in mind when you're d inserting pr uh, trees or even if they're not actually in the frame is that they're going to cast shadow and it can create like interesting rhythm you can either create interesting rhythm so that it creates contrast on the grass or on the floor or on the ground and it can also decrease the importance of the foreground or at least of the ground so that you can better focus on the project so that's all the things you have to keep in mind when you're dealing with uh, trees I'll see you in the final video that will deal with how to actually blend your tree seamlessly into your image. Thanks guys and see you in the next video. Cheers.